What it do, what it does, what it be like, you already know who it is. This is your boy DJ Baby Boy, and you are tuned in to salute the grind featuring that boy trauma. Listen, man, we got, got that boy trauma man on here. Introduce yourself to the people, brother. Whoa, the biggest meal in the city, man. You already know what it is, your boy trauma man, the son of the south. You already know what's going on. For sure, man. Tell the people how long have you been doing music, bro? Ooh, we. I mean, maybe when I could say about when I was like 15, so about, about a good old 18, about 16, eight, about 16 to 18 years. Man. 16 to 18 years. So, so tell us about this whole transition. What got you into it, and uh, you know what? What's the changes that happened uh, as you grew and developed in this music career to where you are now? Oh man. Um, what got me started, man, is, uh, <laughs> you know, being the last, you know, the last of Diane's Mojica, uh, you know, growing up listening to Tupac, and we was a No Limit Soldier family, so <laughs> we listened to a lot of Master P growing up, uh, and then, like I said, my brother, you know, he was always having a vision for music. You know, like I said, we had cousins that was definitely running the game at the time. You know, R.P. the Big Yank, uh, the local boys, uh, Michael King, Cheap Dog, uh, G Child. Uh, they was doing their thing at the time, and just like you know, just just you know, music just run definitely on my daddy's side. You know, uncles playing good times. It was just, it, we were just musically inclined. I ain't really know I had it like that until, you know, my brother actually gave me a chance in the studio. He always used to tell me all the time I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And he was like, you make me an album in a week. You make, you write me uh, 10 songs with three verses. <laughs> okay. In a week, I'm going to let you be a rapper. So I ain't know nothing about Count Bar. So I'm making a whole bunch of paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I, I wrote, you know, I wrote them 10 songs with them three verses, man. And um, I still wasn't ready. <laughs> if I could say, I, I still wasn't ready. It was just something, you know what I'm saying? Just to impress him, to show him that, you know, you know I was up for the challenge, you know? So uh, we just, we took off from there. And like, I was just like glad he gave me the opportunity. And you know, with, with rap, when you first started coming with to be an artist or a rapper at the time, um, it come with coming like a lot of errors. So I made a lot of errors in the beginning. I wasn't, I wasn't the best. I wasn't tight at all. So to get where I'm at now, so you know, he he was just always working with me. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, man, I just you know made a lot of mistakes with music to be where I'm at now. So yeah. Okay, that's what's up. So really a lot of it just your brother motivating you and, and building you and preparing you for it and you, you accepted oh, yeah. the challenge and kept pushing, man. So yeah, salute that man for sure. Uh with with so many people like like you say, you got about 16, 18 years up in it. Um, so I know you met a whole lot of people along the way, but with so many people walking away from music, the rap game and, and all that stuff, uh, what is it that keeps you motivated today to keep on pushing? Oh man, it's, and I, I constantly tell people this all the time, man. It's definitely the love of the game. I just love it. Like, it ain't nothing that make me feel no type of way. Not what's going on with the industry now, with the artists now. Uh, what's what, what's being you know what I'm saying seen on TV or what what's being presented to the world. Like, it's always been a love for it. Like, to, to be able to create what you want to create, and you know what I'm saying. The people that constantly keep me going, which is my family, my kids, you know what I'm saying? Cause they gonna let me know if it's tight or not, especially, especially my daughter. She gonna, okay. she's one of my biggest critiques, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> then my son, he he coming up, so he 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 kind of got a little ear for it too. So it's kind of like, that's kind of dope to me. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, um, that I still got actual listeners and, you know, people that's that's willing to motivate me and tell me to keep going don't let up and uh, you know just you know what I'm saying just staying consistent man to prove to myself every day that I can you know be better than my last project or last song that I did you know what I'm saying 
So yeah, that's yeah. big. That's 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 big time right there, man. When you get that mindset of me versus me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, that's what's up. And that's when stuff start taking off, man. Because really, ain't no competition except for the one in the mirror, man. So so definitely salute that for sure. And uh, yeah. I know recently you've been putting in a lot of major work with the boy for Taz with the Ultra Vibe. So tell me how this link even happened, man. How did it even? Man, could it? How did it start? How did it, how, my how did it happen? Dog. My dog, my dog. Could have been trying to get up with me since 2008. <laughs> the Wobble <laughs> Days. Oh, excuse me. Oh, the Wobble Days. And like, you know, I ain't gonna say he was a perfection at the time, but it wasn't nothing that I was trying to work with at the time. You know what I mean? Mm. And like, uh, the, at the point when I was finna give up before the step in and all that, uh, the man hit me up around 2016. Uh, this is when I started working offshore. And you know, I was I was at a point where I wanted to, um, I was at a point where I wanted to just give up on music. And he called me and he was like, man, I got something cooking up, man. I think you'll like it. And he had sent me, um, I'm from the Silk, ho. He had okay. sent me that record. <laughs> and I was just like, dang, you know, this is different, you know. And, and ever since then, man, we done made history since that, that record right there. Like, it's just been like amazing, bro. The food with him, bro, just to see how he done elevated from how we was from back in the days, from even with the U2DK right. alumni to, you know, the Ultra Vibe, which is still U2DK, you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 but right. It's like, you know, people, you know, they, they elevate to what they right. what they see and what they want to hear. So he um he built it up to, you know what I'm saying, some some young some young nigga shit, if I can say it like that. He right, me, right. And he always told me that for some reason. He was like, he was like, Trump, you need to be. He was like, man, this is what's going on, this young nigga stuff. I'm like, what you mean? <laughs> like, I don't understand what you mean. He was like, man, you need to do this. And I ain't understanding. So when I end up making my MF and dog, I right. understood what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I I end up grabbing more of the, the youth area of it. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> But uh, yeah, bro, I I done elevated with him, and like, and we stayed it going, bro. Like, is real? Heavy. That's what's that's what's up, man. So tell us about these records, man. Um, uh, uh, like you just said, my MF and dog, uh, ooh girl, yeah. you got one coming. But well, you know, already about to step in. Uh, you got one coming. What? Uh, July fourth, meet on bourbon. Uh, meet on bourbon. Yeah, tell about some party. of these records, man. Uh. Oh, yeah, man, you know, we did 100K with Step In with me and Big Zach. We did 100K with, um, me, Tweet, A, Buzz, and Dunn. Um, and that, and, and like I said, did 100K for me, my mother, my MF and dog with me and Patel. Um, and that's, that's just all, you know what I'm saying, advertising and marketing, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. You gotta, you gotta pay to play. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and that's, that's what a lot of artists don't understand. You gotta pay to play. And um, once I learned that you have to buy your own plates and, and all that, that's just to appreciate yourself. You know what I'm saying? Something to, you know, compliment yourself of your accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? So once I learned all that, and then like I said, we got the Mississippi versus, you know, we got that going on. Shout okay, out to salute, Clyde, salute, man. salute. Baby, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Baby boy and them, we got, we, you know, man, we gonna show them out too, girl. <laughs> you feel me? So, <laughs> y'all know so, me, man. Oh. Yes, Lord. Oh, uh, but other than that, man, we just, just like I said, being consistent, making great music, man. And, and like I said, even when that conversation I had with you on um, the day at the shop, you know what I'm saying, man. You you really put it on me, bro. Sometimes you just gotta be selfish and just really grind for yourself and and mm. and show others that you can do everything that the majors doing, and you can do it on an independent scale without all the money and all the, you know, the pockets you probably got to put money in. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I, I build all that up to say that, you know what I'm saying? You can you can buy your plate. You can do, you know what I'm saying? You can you can go to streaming service and, and, and buy promotion. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's how that's how this thing go, bro. You got to pay the plate. 
So, yeah, but like I said, meet on Bourbon July 4th. Um, me, Chase Carter, and Kataz, Cuddy, you know what I'm saying? Produced by the Cuddy Experience. Um, Ooh, girl, you know what I'm saying? Feature Buzz are done. That's out right now. I mean, two big records, man. Like, and it's steady going. Like, we got more, like, some more hits after this. You know what I'm saying? So, right. like I said, man, they just got to stay tuned. All right, so another another song that you got it was a, a a different type of vibe that you want that you want to put some truth out there and, and, and you know put your heart out there, man. To, to wipe your tears, bro. Uh, tell them what what inspired you and what you know, man. man the feeling that you had in the booth from recording the record. Hey, man. To be honest, that's probably the hardest record I probably had to do besides uh, the "I Made Me the Messy" song. You know what I'm saying? What they want, what they need, what they got. Like this, that Wipe Your Tears record was so authentic, bro, because everything I said was true. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I grew up in a, in a, how I can say, a mental abuse, you know what I'm saying? Family situation, you know what I'm saying? Uh, pops on drugs, mama was always doing everything. She was a hustler. That's how me and my brother learned how to hustle. You know what I'm saying? Right. My mama, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? She really, she really was the one out there getting it. You know what I'm saying? Even though my daddy kept a roof over my head, but he was hard head. He was a real rolling stone. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and uh, I, I think we got, we, me and my brother got both of them a part of us because, like, he, he worked hard and she hustled hard. So, it, it, it all panned out, even though he was hard headed, which we all hard headed, but at the same time, it, it all panned out that we all just like them. You feel me? And right. like, you know what I'm saying? My sisters always looked up, you know what I'm saying? They always looked out, you know what I'm saying? Looked out on me when I was growing up, you know what I'm saying? Even in my brother's situation now, uh, where he going through, um, then, you know, losing my grandma, bro. And, you know what I'm saying? That, that's very dear to me. You know what I'm saying? Cause she the reason of the I made me. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when I started saying I made me in 2014. You know what I'm saying? May 14 when she died. So like I like it was it was just a growth from Firestorm. Like I'm still Firestorm, but it was a growth from Firestorm and I couldn't think of nothing else. And you know, my grandma was already always saying, You made yourself. You made yourself. Right. Like dang, and I and I took it and I was like, man, I'm just gonna name this thing. I made me, and and it stuck, man. And you know that's that's yeah, what everything been, changed that's what from that doing. day. <laughs> Amen, man. man that's it been there ever since then, and it, and it elevated like real talk. Like people still know me from Firestorm, but at the same time, they respect the whole I made me thing, bro. Like they respect, it. and you know what I'm saying. I, I rock with I'm yeah, rocking yeah. right now for the last year and a half. Now I've been rocking with um, Riga Heights Management. You know what I'm saying. Shout out to Lee. Um, my management, um, you know, real genuine guy. And like I said, I mentioned him, you know what I'm saying, in the song. Um, a man that just want to see people win, bro. It ain't right, nothing right, like right. being with somebody that want to see you win. So he gave me so so much determination, like how my brother gave me when I was in the game. My brother always, a lot of people always thought my brother gave, he gave, he gave. No, my brother made me earn that shit, you feel me? He right, ain't right, never just right. gave me anything. He always made me earn. It, you feel me? So that that song wiped the tears. Like I'm just like, hey, dude, when that door open, I'm gonna make sure all y'all crying and all right, shit. I'm gonna wipe y'all tears when this, this shit do pop out. You know what I'm saying? Because we know this shit take years, time, and dedication. And, you know what I'm saying? But when the doors do open, it's gonna happen. Bro. Like for real, for real. Man, salute, salute, one hundred, man. That, that's what it is, man. Um, I know uh, we was talking about marketing and the management. Salute to the new, the new management and building your solid team and all that. Um, I want you to touch on this new vision that you had for us with these trauma and friend concerts that you're putting together and um, your your vibe and you know what inspired that and what and you know just tell them about how how you moved to move towards that. Um, the Trauma and Friends um, sagas, <laughs> basically, man, it was just like, it was just like, I was watching a lot of uh, the Boosie Bashes and, you know, Yo Gotti Bash and Memphis and stuff like that and how they were just bringing a whole bunch of artists together on one stage. 
And me knowing me, I know I, I, I fools with a lot of artists, like a lot of artists be in my DMs, or we just got a mutual connection or respect on music, you know what I'm saying? All right. And I was just like, I was like, okay, enough for me. Cause at the end of the day, when I can, I can post something on social media and people put it in a frenzy, people go crazy. I might not get a many likes, but I got a thousand views, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Somebody watch, you feel me? So I was like, and I, you know, I look at a lot of uh, Mississippi artists, bro, and I see the potential they have and the the followings, the, the following. <laughs> right, right. That <laughs> a lot of them have on the post. internet. Yeah, the following right, right. they have on the mm-hmm. internet. The followings they have on the internet. So, I, and to be honest, I'm a, I'm a lurking person. So I look at the comments, the, you know, just, you know, looking at everything, the algorithm, how they got things going. And they be like, oh, man, you need to do a show. You need to do a show. And I was always sitting there thinking like, okay, baby boy, man, while I Wednesday for the artist to come out there and showcase the talent and, you know, help them with their performance in case they do pull a show, they know how to, you know, go to that show and present an actual show. But I want them to actually have a show and actually bring people, which you had did the same thing. You wanted them to bring people to their performance. So right. then I involved the ticket situation because no promoter ever in Mississippi back in the days never thought of giving artists tickets to sell to his venues so he can make money and and sell tickets for the promoter so the promoter can split, you know what I'm saying, split profit. You feel me? Right, right, right. At least let the artists make something, bro. So at the end of the day. Make some money off of it. Right. Make some money off of it. At the end of the day, if the major artists don't get paid, the local artists need to get something too for his time. You feel me? So right. I was like, okay, let me involve these tickets. 10 tickets, first five come back to me, the last five come back to you. You can sell your tickets for however much you want to sell them for. Get what I mean? But bring right. me my, bring me what I ask for. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I'm investing into the show. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So that was my thing with that, bro. And just putting a whole bunch of different artists, diverse artists, people that ain't even in the same lane on a show with me. And half the time I wouldn't even, you know, performing. Or it's just my face, you know what I'm saying? Just to show people that it's, it's more than me. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah, definitely yeah. the type of person to keep it all to myself. It was, it's them too. I, I'm, right. I'm not just Mississippi, it's them too. You feel right. me? So that was just basically giving them that, that platform of, you know, cause ain't, it wasn't nothing going on no more after the Wild Out Wednesdays and right, right. you know, the Zoles Corner, the $2 Tuesday after you walked, ain't gonna say you walked away from it, but you had bigger <laughs> things. And COVID more. happened, man. COVID look, happened, look, man, look. and once COVID oh, happened. What, what, what's <laughs> one of your favorite sayings you and Fat Joe? Yesterday's price is not today's price. It's not price. the same. So you had hey. some money. You had some money on the table, so bro, you had to, you had, you had bigger money on the table, so you had to move forward, and that's understandable, man. People right, don't right. understand that that it take money. You gotta to, to make money. You gotta spend money. You feel me? Right. So the thing was, bro, like I, I got, I got bored again, and a lot of people be so quick to say, Trump, why are you so focused on Hattiesburg? I'm not focused on Hattiesburg. I don't. I had artists from Collins, Jackson. Uh, just all surrounding areas, not just in Hattiesburg. You feel me? Right. They came to Hattiesburg, but you know what I'm saying? And then my thing was too, to show them artists that we can come to their city and do the same thing. So if I if I do something with Snooky or KY, let's have a uh, Snooky and friends and you can invite me and I'll perform. Do the same right, thing. Right. I just did for you, but a lot of people don't catch on to that, man. A lot of artists right. don't catch on to that because they so self-centered, bro, and, and like I said, they'll make their reality, they'll make their reality to where they ain't never been nowhere or got nowhere because they so selfish. You feel me? And that's one thing I had to learn a long time ago. You can't be selfish. Yeah, so, that's the game, man. I'm, for sure. I'm, I'm talking about selfish, and I'm talking about selfish as far as like, oh, I'm gonna keep all this stuff to myself. I'm yeah, keep to, all this uh, game yeah. to myself. You feel me? Yeah, I got you. So if, mm-hmm. if, if I spread it out to you to open up your mind, we can all make some money together. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But if your mind ain't open, it 
you gonna forever be in that same spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so for sure, for sure. That, that's exactly what it is, man. Uh, I know we over our time, but I want you to, you know, let the people know how to contact you and give your final shout outs. So we could uh yeah. go and wrap it up, man. But it's been a good, good interview for show for show, man. Um, so how can the people contact you? Get your shout outs and we're gonna we're gonna oh, adios. Yeah, you can um do not masters.com slash trauma six oh one. You can hit me up on Facebook, Trauma Dixon or Trauma Six O One, uh Instagram, Trauma Man Six O One, and Twitter, Trauma Man. Yeah, just like that. That's it, man. So y'all see how to booking, contact. Booking, Lee Moore, 601 man. If you want to book me, hey, July 4th, meet on Bourbon. Everywhere meet me, sold and heard. Let's go. Man, got a good show, man. Y'all need to rock with him for show, for show. Book him. He going to make sure you turn up. He got at least a 30-minute show at least. And it's going to be number bangers he dropping on y'all, man. You know what I'm talking about? Any shout-outs you want to give, brother? Hey man, shout out to the shout out to the label, man. UVI, uh, Riga Heights, Firestorm Entertainment, U2DK, the Wild Film. Shout out to everybody that's rocking with me, man. For real, for real. Shout out to my family. I love y'all. Y'all already know what it is. It's up here. That's what it is, man. We up out of here. And once again, Trauma Man, I salute the grind, man. I see you. Keep doing what you do. Salute.